Hello everyone, my name is Pepsilk and welcome to Thoughts On. This is a series where I analyze games and give my opinions on them. Today, we'll be looking at the highly anticipated Dead Space 1 remake. I was very skeptical of this one prior to its release, with EA all of a sudden giving a damn about single player games, a studio that I've never heard of be responsible for Star Wars Squadrons and Battlefront 2, and being given a 15 year old game that I didn't think needed to be remade or remastered for that matter, as the game in my opinion has aged pretty well thanks to its amazing art style. But man, have EA Motive killed it with this one. Early game reviews were coming out praising the remake for staying faithful to the original, and some of my go-to reviewers were surprised by how good the quality was. Suffice to say, I copped it myself on Steam and decided to give this thing a run for its money, considering that I had just played the original and Dead Space 2 in hype for this game. And it is simply remarkable what they've done to not only bring the definitive way of playing Dead Space 1, but also re-experiencing it all over again with subtle changes and improvements. Let's go over this game in detail, shall we? Dead Space pins you into the boots of Concordance Extraction Company Engineer Isaac Clark, or CEC for short, aboard a repair vessel to the USG Ishimura, a massive planetary mining ship that has gone silent above the planet known as Aegis 7. The crew includes the CEC security officer Zach Hammond, computer specialist Kendra Daniels, and security personnel Haley Johnston and Zach Chen. The travel sequence sets the plot perfectly as Isaac has a personal reason for going to the Ishimura, his girlfriend Nicole Brennan, a doctor who left a final video message for him before the ship went dark. I don't want to go into too much detail about the story, but to sum it up, they arrive at the ship, monsters known as Necromorphs have taken and infected almost everyone on board and Isaac and the crew are forced to fight and figure out what the hell is going on. The supposed link to the outbreak which plays a role in the future games as well are the markers. These statues that cause anyone that go near it to go clinically insane, ranging from paranoia to hallucinations and forcing them to kill or murder themselves. The game follows Isaac through many parts of the ship as he'll be repairing, slicing, freezing, grabbing and killing any necromorphs that stand in his way between him and finding his girlfriend. You'll also be meeting different characters along the way, each having their own motives and goals towards the red marker. I could go more into the story of Dead Space as I think there are some very interesting and new plot points that have been shown through the new use of side missions, but that's for another video. The star of the show in the Dead Space remake is the gameplay improvements and changes that have been made to keep the game fresh, accessible and interesting for both new and old players of the franchise. For starters, Isaac now talks. No thanks to whoever sabotaged the fuck out of these engines. In the original game, Isaac was a silent protagonist and the only times you could hear him is whenever he's grunting or taking damage by an enemy. Everything that happened in the moments where characters were talking to you was open to your own imagination, and you can interpret slash react to it however you want, since that's the core focus whenever you make a silent protagonist in a video game. In the remake, he now has dialogue in almost every situation when there's a conversation between someone and it's a nice subtle change that adds more life to the world of Dead Space for being able to hear what Isaac has to say about the things that he is doing instead of imagining what he would say. They even took the time to bring back voice actor Gunnar Wright from Dead Space 2 and 3, so fans will feel right at home hearing his voice. Although his voice looks so different from the originals, he's so much younger than I imagined. Speaking of the new faces, all the characters look great except for Nicole which looks like she's in her 40s now as opposed to looking like she's in her 20s in the original game. That's the gimmicks of new technology I guess. I wouldn't be surprised if the community came together and started a petition to bring back the young face of Nicole, but I can tolerate it if she's going to look the same in the Dead Space 2 remake, should that exist and be confirmed in the next year. Dead Space has a new AI intensified director system that offers more than 1000 plus events, giving players random enemy spawns, audio, lighting, fog and steam changes to create a bunch of scenarios, allowing for replayability and different experiences, especially for those who want to go into New Game Plus immediately after finishing the game. I'm currently playing it on my second playthrough as of writing this video and I did notice changes in enemy spawns and movement as the game decided to give me the harder necros at the start as opposed to introducing them in later chapters. This is an awesome system and it keeps players engaged and tense at all times as you won't know what to expect for the next encounter. All of the zero gravity moments have been changed to adapt to Dead Space 2 and 3 gravity systems. So instead of zooming to a location and having it change your elevation and pitch for you, you now have full control of all the gravity sections. Again, a very nice change to give players more freedom and control of where they're going. Although I would argue that the gravity system can be a bit janky at times because controlling your pitch can get annoying and frustrating and having to adjust your elevation every time just to make sure you're going the right way can be a bit of a pain. 
I got dizzy one time during one of these sections because I got so lost that I had to keep readjusting my camera and pause the game to take a moment before coming back and finishing it off. Another quick thing to mention is that they got rid of the painful asteroid turret section and opted for a zero gravity approach where you instead calibrate the turrets, aim and shoot it as opposed to just sitting on the turret and having to deal with the bad camera controls to blast those asteroids. This is great for console players as the improved controls on controllers makes this section a lot more fun and less of a slog. The gunplay has been retained from the original for the most part, with dismemberment being the key to killing the necromorphs, as well as weapon and suit upgrades being the same, but with some new changes to fire modes and ways of earning them. A few of these changes include the pulse rifle, firing proximity mines instead of the 360 degree radial fire, being extremely useful for dealing with groups of enemies. The contact beam's primary fire is now a freaking laser beam that continuously shreds necros as opposed to its projectile based shot in the original and the secondary fire being a massive damage laser shot, which is just so cool. The contact beam remains one of my favorite weapons in Dead Space for being stupidly powerful while having an extremely low ammo count, though this can be abused somehow, which I'll go over in just a moment. Weapons are now obtained by progressing through the game instead of buying them in the store, which I think is a good decision as players will get to use every weapon and then decide later down the line on what weapons they want to use, seeing that you can only have four equipped at any given time. The looting system has been taken from the original games where items and loot are given to you based on your inventory, health and stasis meters and current weapons that are equipped. Now although this is a good RNG loot system in concept, it can be easily abused by simply putting all but two weapons into your storage, telling the game that you're not using those weapons and instead dropping ammo for the two weapons that you're using. I immediately noticed this when I put the force gun away as I wasn't getting any force energy from lockers and corpses. I wish that Motive took the time to overhaul and change the way this system works, such as giving the player ammo drops for every weapon available so they'll have to switch between weapons and properly utilize their resources, incentivizing players to use every gun that's at their disposal. You could play this game with only the plasma cutter and get by easily because the game will just shower you with plasma energy, and you'll never feel like you're running out of ammo thanks to its generosity. Perhaps they could add modifiers like in Dishonored 2, where you can customize your own difficulty and change the way ammo drops spawn alongside other options of course. The dismemberment system has been properly updated to show body parts being torn to shreds and gore has been up to a hundred, letting you see your foes get decimated as you cut them down with mining weapons. Bit of a side note here, but can I just say using mining weapons to kill things just sounds so freaking cool? I don't know what it is, but I'll take these weapons over conventional guns any day of the week since I see that with every shooter I play these days. A true testament to how great this game was in 2008 and how great it is now. There's a new security clearance system where throughout the game there will be locked doors that Isaac can't access and these are earned by progressing through the game, encouraging the player to revisit parts of the Ishimura with the new and improved tram system which has been designed to work seamlessly and make the massive ship feel like one interconnected space. No loading screens, simply pick a location and the game will take you straight there. Now I know it's done like this to hide loading screens but I'd rather have a seamless travel experience then have a screenshot with a tip being put on the bottom of the screen. These security doors give you weapon upgrades and goodies which you need to expand upon the upgrade trees and thankfully there's no more wasting nodes to open up slots. You just have to get the upgrade, bring it to a bench and voila the nodes are opened up. One cool thing that really shook me to the core is when you start Dead Space up after making your first save game. From then on the game loads your save as you go through the starting screens and once the screens pass you simply press continue and you're back in. No need to click load game and load your save. I've never in my life seen a game load a save while it's starting and it's safe to say that this needs to become the norm going forward. How and why are we only seeing this now in gaming? The final thing I want to talk about is the side missions. These are new pieces of content that have been subtly added to flesh out the world of the Ishimura more and detail the origins of the outbreak. You also get some items and gear for completing these so it's worth going out of the way to do them. EA Motive killed it when it comes to the design team. I can't stress how amazing this game looks at certain points throughout the game. Whether it's the use of volumetric fog and lighting for majority of the dark sections, the rusting of all the rig's machinery, the dead tissue coming out of the Ishimura's walls, the dead bodies sprawling across the floors, and the blood and vomit decals. They murdered it out of the park with this one. These effects are also influenced by the AI director as mentioned before, with each effect being put into a layer that may or may not play at any given time changing the lighting and ambience of an area immediately. It's very noticeable and awesome how they've compiled each of these effects to play at different levels and times. It's like dynamic audio but with effects. 
Another big plus is that most of the areas have been taken from the original, and even though the similarity of the level is there, it's the power of the Frostbite engine that further helps bring this game to newer heights. If this is going to be the golden standard going forward for remakes, albeit survival horror or in general, this is a standard that's going to be hard to reach for a lot of developers, I feel. Necromorphs can spawn in all kinds of places, such as vents, doors, and windows. It's always best to aim down sights and take your time no matter where you are, because they could and can appear at any time, especially when you least expect it. The UI hasn't been changed, but rather overhauled to look a lot cleaner and easier to navigate, with everything being done interactively through the use of the rig suit. This was also the case in the original game, and it's done to incite immersion and realism while also having less clutter on your screen, further keeping you on your feet at all times. The only time where you won't feel so immersive is when you pause the game after a necromorph appears right in front of you or something like that. Thankfully, the game's original score by Jason Graves was retained and they didn't change too much other than adding in new musical elements and cues, which have been composed by Trevor Gurekis. Motive also took the time to remake and remaster all of the game's sounds, increasing their audio quality and making everything sound more crisp instead of canned and condensed like it was in the original. One thing that never gets old with these games is when the music amps up every time the player looks at a necromorph. I'm not sure what it is, but I always find it so cool that dynamic audio can really do things like that in video games, and it's simply fascinating. Weapons sound satisfying as always, enemies are as scary as ever, and ambient music alone is enough to make you feel scared, even when there's nothing going on. Out of the box, Dead Space Remake runs like butter on PC. Although when I first started the game, I was experiencing stutters in the first few hours of gameplay. It's open to speculation as to what causes it, but I believe it came from the shaders, as the game compiles shaders the first time you launch it. So there may have been sections of the Ishimura that weren't properly compiled, causing the game to do a bit of a poo and have quick freezes. Thankfully, this didn't last long, and after I launched it in the following days, the game was fine and there were no stutters. For the first half of the game, I was playing the game on all ultra settings with DLSS quality turned on, on an RTX 3080 with an AMD Ryzen 3600X and I was averaging around 70 to 100 FPS, with frame drops in the big areas, but it's justified due to the extreme use of volumetric fog and lighting, which combined can be frame killers. I was surprised to see my game have that high FPS because after I dropped it to high settings by mid-game, I only saved about 10 or so-ish frames, so it wasn't that big of a deal for me, considering that this is a survival horror game and you don't need 120 frames to get an advantage over killing necromorphs. I strongly recommend Digital Foundry's video on Dead Space for more information about mid and lower end PCs to get an idea on whether or not the game will run smoothly on your PC rig. Dead Space Remake is the new definitive way to play Dead Space 1 and though my skepticism was at an all time high, EA Motors risk to build this masterpiece from 15 years ago paid off and it's safe to say that 2023 for gaming has started off in the right direction and it's only going to get better for survival horror games with the Resident Evil 4 Remake set to come out in March, which I am very excited for. Dead Space appeases both new and old fans with plenty of content, scares, new game plus, upgrades, story, and contents that are going to be remembered for decades to come, and one can only hope that a Dead Space 2 remake is on the rise. But judging from the overwhelmingly positive reception and Epic partnering up with EA to bring Isaac into Fortnite, I say that Dead Space is well on its way to coming back to greatness as a franchise, and I can't wait to see what Motive is going to do next. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for sticking by and watching. If you enjoyed, like the video. If I missed anything, comment down below. Subscribe for more, and I'll have more coming to you soon. Peace.